Okay, after much experimentation, I think I figured out how to get audio working plugged in from the uh, Korg Volca Beats, our drum machine in this case, through this Audio Technica USB device here and into my computer. Um, so first thing you'll need to do is have your drum machine plugged into splitters. I have one splitter going out to headphones. In this case, in my in my case, I'm uh, going into the speaker. And then um, the other splitter is plugged in one of these cables that's going into the microphone jack, which is colored pink on this microphone thing, this audio input. So I've got one splitter going into headphones, one going into the input. This should be also green. Mine's not lit up because this is not the one I'm actually plugged into, but your um, USB audio device should be green. And next thing we're going to do is change the settings on the computer. So let's look down here at the bottom right part of my screen here. Uh, we're going to tell, uh, I'm going to right click on this little speaker icon. So you right click on the speaker icon, which I've already messed up on here, and choose playback devices. Under playback devices, you should see for speakers ATR to USB. So select this, choose properties. Uh, under this properties window, we're going to look under the levels tab. And in the levels tab, make sure that microphone is set to 50. Okay, so that is under, kind of confusing, under playback and under levels, microphone set to 50. Yours is probably set to zero. So it took me a long time to figure out where this was. Let me tell you, that was fun. Um, okay, that's good. Now we're going to go into recording and under the microphone setting here. We're going to choose properties and look at these levels. These levels I've set to like 70. Your computer might be a little different, but um, on mine it's set at 70. So again, I'm going to do that real quick. Look under the sound button here. Right click. Choose playback devices. You're going to tell speakers where the ATR2 USB under playback, properties, Change these levels to 50, okay? And the recording microphone levels to 70. Click OK. Okay, now back to Adobe Audition. So from here, uh, I need to make a new multi-track uh, session. So let's do that. Under multi-track, click on this little button here, or you could choose file. Whoops, file, new and multi-track session, or control N. So this is for the A plus series, uh, first beat. You can click on the browse button to tell Audition where to put this. You currently have no idea where it's going. I don't either, um, but I can, I'm pretty good at finding stuff. Are you good at finding stuff? If not, click on browse, tell it to go to the documents folder. Okay, well, we're going to say OK from here. Um, and this is where we're going to have to set up a few more things. So I've told the computer to listen to my drum machine. Now I need to tell Adobe Audition to listen to that drum machine as well. Um, in track one here, we're going to click on where it says default stereo input and go under stereo and choose microphone. If you don't see microphone there, you might not see this. You need to go under audio hardware. So let's look at that. Under audio hardware, make sure that default input is set for this microphone ATR. Okay, might be yours might be set for something else. Also default output, on my computer it's set for Samsung because that's my monitor. Uh, on your computer you'll probably set yours for Dell. Okay. So it's very important. Under the preferences, audio hardware, the input should be microphone. And then under this track here, well, let's see. Can I play something? Okay. Notice uh, I played something on the drum machine. It doesn't hear anything. Let's go back to Audition. And we're going to arm this for record. Once I do that, yeah, there you go. We see our audio levels. Awesome. So now you know this is going to record something. I'm going to go ahead and clear this pattern function all. Clear. And there is an order which I'm going to do this. 
to at whatever you want to call it. Um, essentially, I just need to hit record here and then start playing my beat here. So we've changed the input. I've set this track to record. Um, and now I'll come down here and hit record and start recording something. In my case, though, I, don't, I haven't made a beat yet. Um, so I'm going to quickly do that for you while we're here. Um, so you can see how that works. Notice there's nothing playing now. Well, let's just go ahead and record my jam session. So I'm going to hit the record button. Let's see. Except this isn't the performance that you're going to record. So this is kind of the, uh, the rehearsal. This is me programming. I'm going to program my beat. So I'm going to start with four on the floor. And f uh, for everybody watching at home, I'm in currently in live mode. So I need to switch to step mode. And we'll start on part for kick. And on the kick, I'm going to just go ahead and turn on four on the floor. And ooh, maybe my tempo will go up to 130. This is going to be a fast one. OK, awesome. I want to get it exactly at 130, though. Ooh, that was hard. OK, let's save this under part one. Function memory one. Uh, this is going to be a traditional dance beat. So we'll turn on uh, my snare at the 5 and 13. Awesome. Function, memory. Save it on two. Keep adding parts. So you guys have seen this lesson before. I want you to make up your own drum beats. Little two. I'm gonna avoid hitting where the uh, kick is hitting. Ooh. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, now I'm gonna turn on the high tom on four, five, and seven. So I'm gonna go to the high tom part. Four, five, seven. Function, memory, we'll save that on three. So I've got my song half programmed. Awesome. Let's turn on some hi hats. And we'll do an open hi hat. I want the close the open hi hat to close quicker, so I'm gonna go under open and change the K and turn it all the way down, I think. Function memory four. Cool. When I make this part is gonna be like a build up, so we're gonna put some toms. Maybe a few more kicks at the end because it's going to kind of go into a big, I don't know, this is going to be the, the, the lead up. So I'm going to drop the bass later. Uh, so I'm going to do function memory, put that on five. And then finally, to kind of break some of that tension, we're going to open up the close hi-hat all the way. go crazy. Turn off, just to kind of change the kicks, I guess. The clabs are cool, so. Um, under clabs, because clabs is a PCM thing, I'm going to turn the speed up of that. Okay, so that's going to be my last part, function memory. And six. So now I've made six different parts, and now I'm ready to record my jam here. So let's do so. Uh, remember, we are armed for record. I'll now hit the record button here. 
I'm gonna let it play for a second. I'll load memory, load one, and we'll just start playing. Lost track. Two, two, three, four, two, three, and boom. Nice. Three, two, three, four, four, two, three, and this is my lead up. Okay. I'm actually gonna hang out here for a while. I like this. Here I'm gonna talk about stutter. First, let's turn up the stutter a little bit. So it starts doing some crazy stuff here. Let's turn it all the way down. That's because global stutter is on. I'm gonna hold the function button and strike the global stutter key here. Now global stutter is not on. I'm gonna choose snare. So it's only gonna stutter the snare. How about only stuttering the clap? Awesome. Okay, now I'm gonna switch over to the snare and we're gonna let this go a couple more times. One, two, one, two, three, four, and load six. Slowly train these down. Done. Uh, now I will hit stop in Adobe Audition. Okay, uh, whoa, that worked this time finally. Um, let's scroll back. So to scroll back, I actually have my scroll up top here. We can use this to scroll over. Also, if I'm assuming correctly, I'm new to Audition, but I've used Adobe Premiere before, and uh, usually if you drag on the end of this bar, it will have the effect of zooming in. Okay, so now we can see more of this at once. So you can see in my recording, I have a little bit too much space in the beginning and the end. Um, it's really easy to trim this. So let's just, let's do so, but um, Mr. Zbarth needs to figure out how to do so. Oh, here we go. Um, so right now I'm using the move tool. Uh, I want to use the not the slip tool. Jeez, is there no selection tool? Uh, well, either way, I'm going to zoom in to the beginning here. I'm going to use this razor tool here. The razor will let me cut. Boom. Yes, it did. Okay. And now I'll grab my move tool, select this chunk, and hit the backspace. I'll drag uh, my song all the way over. Okay. Let's go over to the end of the song here. Uh, another way to crop this is to simply click and drag on the end. So I didn't even need to use, oh, and look, it like automatically snapped. That's what I should have done. The razor is another option though. Um, so here I'm gonna do Control S. Uh, now to turn this in or to upload it to SoundCloud, or wherever you're putting it up, we're going to go to the file menu and choose export, a multi-track mix down, and we'll do, I mean the entire session will work for sure. You just can't say file save, you're not done. This is a .sesx file. Um, so you do need to export this at some point. One option is to select your clip, choose File, Export, uh, Multi-Track Mix Down, and choose Selected Clips. Um, format is a wave, that's good. File name, you might want to rename something a little better than this, right? Check the location, currently it's going in Documents, but if I click in Browse, we'll see where it's really, oh yeah, it is going in my Documents folder, okay. Um, so yeah, click OK. So you're looking for a WAV file here. 
Um, there's lots more you can do with this. You know, there's all sorts of like effects you can add to this from Audition, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope this all worked. Bye.